Have you ever filmed a video and thought, man, this is just way too bright or this is way too dark. Or maybe you filmed something and thought, I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna fix this in post-production. Well, today I'm gonna show you a specific editing tool that could help guide you through the editing process. This tool is called Scopes. In my opinion, a lot of filmmakers are a little too afraid to push the colors to the limit and scopes are going to help that process a lot. Now, I understand when you look at this thing, you're gonna think, what the heck am I even looking at? Or why is this even important? Well, let's stop wasting time and get right into it. So today we're gonna be looking at three different clips. One clip is from a show I filmed down in Columbus, Ohio. They played a Halloween show and I was fortunate enough to capture it on camera. Next clip we'll be taking a look at is from a wedding I filmed not too long ago. And last is some drone footage up in Seattle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into our color tab. Now that we're in our color tab, uh, you're gonna see the footage up here on the top left corner. And then you're gonna see these scopes on the bottom right. And right now it's set to waveform and that's going to be the most common scope that you're going to see think about it like this the scopes are a graph of light that emulates what your footage is so when i click play you're going to notice that any part of light here is reflective of the scopes on the bottom here so when the light increases from the show you're going to see in the footage that it's going to get brighter and then in the scopes it's going to get brighter as well say hi to zoe she wants to she wants to interrupt me right now who's a good girl go have fun by the way, this footage was filmed with a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera. Filmed in B-RAW at 6K. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this one more time. And I'm going to say, okay, about right there. It's about where I want to start messing with my footage. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our primary color wheels. The same principle is going to apply across all editing platforms. Your gain is essentially my highlights, the gamma is essentially my midtones, and the lift are all gonna be my shadows and the blacks. Now, if you see here, if I mess with my blacks and my shadows, which is what zero represents on the scopes, and then up top, you can guess, it's gonna be your how, how bright the footage is. So up top is bright, down here, is dark so the darker i bring it you can see with the footage and the scopes it's going to get darker or brighter and it shows right there on the graph as well as the footage up top if i mess with my gain my highlights where the light is really really shining behind the artist all of those blacks get completely washed out and that is pure white, meaning there's no detail there. But because that's a practical light and that's intentional with the show, we're not gonna really mess with that too much. So let's find a frame where everything looks kind of, um, where it looks pretty normal. I guess about right there, it looks pretty even. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move my shadows down a little bit and you can see in the scopes are moving down as I push the blacks down further. So I think I like it about right. I think I like it about right there. And then I'm gonna increase my gain about right there. I'm gonna create a new node quick. Now let's mess with the midtones to see what happens there. And I'll mess with a little bit of contrast too, why not? So this is the before and this is the after. And all I'm doing is following the scope. So I'm, not messing with color, I'm not messing with I'm not messing with the HDR tab. I'm simply just going based on bright and dark here. So right in the middle of my image, we've got this artist here. And in the middle of the graph, there's a bunch of peaks and valleys that go with the graph here. This part right here is my subject. Now, that's how you read waveform. Now, if you want to go into parade, this might be where you think it's a little bit confusing as well but it's the same graph of the waveform. So it's this exact same graph, but broken up between red, green, and blue because video is made up of 
red, green, and blue, RGB. So if I go into the parade, because remember, it's a waveform broken up between each color channel. So if I want to go ahead and mess with the darker part of the reds, all I do is just bring this down, crush it a little bit maybe, and you get more of a green hue. Let's reset that, and I'll do the same thing with green. So I'm gonna mess with the darker parts of green. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. And as you can see, it's gonna bring these two up and this one down and red and blue make more of a purple color. And these colors are all balanced out based on your camera settings, uh, based on the white balance, the environment that it's shot in. There's a lot of different factors, but it's trying to compensate for the footage you already have. So this footage is already naturally green. Meaning when I try to drop the greens a little bit, it's going to bring out more of the red and blue channels. Let's reset that. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the blues. So I'm gonna crush the blues and it's gonna get a combination of more greens and reds, which bring out more of a yellow tone. Let's reset that one. And just to kind of jump ahead, let's dive into the gain a little bit more or the highlights. So if I want to increase the highlights let's increase it quite a bit just to kind of show you what's going on here now you can see up at the top you have these sections here that are kind of going a little bit past 1023 for all the musicians out there what that means is it's peaking all you audio nerds know what that means it means it's clipping any section of the video that has these levels of peaking means there's no detail. So if I crush the black super, super hard, you can see in the footage up here, there's no detail. And you can see it down here in the scopes. All of the blacks are peaking. Let's go back and forth to show you the difference. So this is the raw footage, and this is what we've done to it so far, simply by messing with the darks and the lights. Okay, let's bounce over to the wedding footage I shot. This footage was shot with a Canon R5. Okay, now let's go back to the scopes. We have our waveform. We have our footage up top here. Let's play with the blacks a little bit. Let's see how far we can push it. So let's bring it all the way down close to zero. See how that looks. Not too bad. Just a little dark, so we're gonna play with the highlights in just a minute. Okay. So, now that our blacks are exactly where we want them to be, let's take our highlights and push these up and notice that in the middle of the frame here is the middle of this graph. It's the same exact thing. Let's find a good middle frame there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So let's push the highlights just a little bit more because wedding films just like to be very bright and beautiful looking. And you know, let's not be afraid of pushing this one a little bit too far because this was shot in the daytime and it's the, the brightest day of their life. So we're gonna make the footage very, very bright. Now notice if I push it too hard, all of that detail gets lost out. And you can see right here in the scopes, that's exactly what's happening. So let's find a happy middle ground. I like, I think that looks pretty good, about right there. And yes, yes, I know this part of the scopes, this part of the footage is completely blown out. There's no detail, but that's intentional on my part. And it's the way I filmed it as well. This wasn't really supposed to have a whole lot of detail. So now let's move into the midtones. So this one I always just kind of guess with really, but because we want this footage to be a little bit brighter. I'm gonna stick it, um, I'm gonna stick it about right there. Play with the contrast a little bit. And notice the contrast is gonna stretch the scopes pretty hard too. The higher you make the contrast, the more it's gonna stretch out like this. The smaller you bring your contrast, the less you make it, the thinner your footage looks like this. Okay, remember, we haven't messed with any color yet. We are only going based off of 
how bright things are and how dark things are. Our levels aren't peaking except for the highlights because that's intentional. And we're going to go into the saturation and just push that a little bit. Now with this, I'm going to push it all the way up. Now you're going to be thinking, wow, this is too crazy. This is way too saturated. I don't like this at all. Well, me too. So what we're going to do, we're looking at our waveform and now we're going to go into our vector scope. If I lower my saturation, it's going to shrink the graph. This is your color wheel. Think about it like the color wheel you saw in art class back in elementary school. You're going to take a look at this graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that all of these colors are a part of the color wheel. And you can see here, you have red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. Here I can click this here. I'm going to show my skin tone indicator. This line here shows what a human's skin tone is supposed to be. So I would say that this is right on the money, right about where we want it to be. And if you want to shift it around, you can mess with the hue and notice it's going in all different directions based on where I shift the hue tab to. Let's keep this to where it was because it was pretty dang close to having near perfect skin tone based on this line in the vector scope. Now let's go back to waveform and you know, let's just increase the saturation just a little bit. And now let's take a look at what the footage used to be. This was the footage I started with, with the Canon R5. And this is what we came up with following the scopes and following the vector scope to make sure that her skin tones were accurate. We can look in the parade and everything looks pretty consistent. So I wouldn't worry about it too much from there. Hit playback. Oh yeah, it looks great. Okay, moving forward. Let's take a look at some drone shots. This was filmed with an Inspire 3 DJI drone. Okay, so when we play through this footage, remember, the scopes and our footage are the exact same thing. The scopes are just a light meter, a graph of lights that replicates your footage in a graph format. So, if I take the shot of the mountains with this valley here, and I bring my blacks down. You can see it gets darker in the footage and also it gets lower within the graph. And if it goes too low, you notice the footage starts to look a little, a little bad there. And that's because it's considered to be peaking. So if your footage looks like this and it looks like it's going past zero, all you're going to want to do is lift it up. I like it to be about right there. Just that way it's like a true black, but it's nothing crazy where you're going to have a whole lot of detail loss. Now let's go into the gain or your highlights. And we're going to increase it here and notice the footage gets brighter as the middle part of the graph gets higher as well. It's because it's getting brighter. I like it to be about right there, I think. If I go too high, you're gonna have a whole lot of detail loss right here and that looks bad. And you can see in the graph here, it's the exact same thing. It's all peaking up top. Now, if you film it like that, all that detail is lost and there's not a whole lot you can do. So that's why I always try to shoot underexposed when I can. So let's bring it back down about right there. So that way the footage looks bright and warm and sunny, but it's not too overexposed to where there's detail loss. Uh, 
Okay, now let's go back to the vector scope. Now see these squares here? I like to see these squares as kind of like your guidelines. If it goes way too past that there, if I push the greens really, really hard, you're gonna see in the vector scope that it's going past your comfortable, your comfortable zone. And it looks really, really bad. So let's go ahead and reset that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the saturation just a little bit right to the parameter and see how the green the greens of the trees look very 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 green and the blue looks very very blue man looks so good but if i push the saturation too hard now it looks just like a rip off of a bob ross painting so let's go ahead and undo that and let's stay within our parameters. I'm gonna bring it back down just a little bit more. About right, about right there. Looks pretty good to me. So what did we learn here? The waveform scope is going to just be a graph of light that emulates the exact same footage, just in a graph format. So we understand that zero means the darkest point and 1023 means the brightest point. Anything past 1023 or anything past zero means you're peaking, whether it be your highlights or your black tones. Let's move over into the vector scope. This line here represents true skin tone. And it looks like our skin tones are right there, right in the money. And the parade is the same thing as waveform, but broken up between three different channels. You have your red, green, and blue. So remember, all of this footage was edited just by following the scopes. If you read them, just like I did, you'll be able to have really clean looking footage. It's not going to appear like the blacks have completely lost all detail. It's not going to look like it's way, way, way too bright where you lost detail on the highlights. Everything is going to come out really, really smooth and it's going to be way easier for you to understand how to color grade perfectly. And the best part of all this is that Everything is subjective. If you want your blacks to be super crushed, go for it. If you want your highlights to be completely blown out, go for it. No one's gonna stop you. It's your art. You do whatever you want. But in my opinion, you need to understand the rules before you're ready to break them. Rules are meant to be broken, right? But understand how the rules work before you do it. Okay, well, um, yeah, I hope this helped you. And if you wanna learn how to be a better filmmaker or a better photographer, make sure you hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and drop a comment below to let me know what you think. We'll see you in the next one.